Hello, and a share. I wanted to share with you a little haul. This haul is, is for candles and gems. Uh, I did this haul while, while I was visiting Tel Aviv. And the thing is that I just, okay, I really like to keep my videos about witchcraft, okay? I, I don't necessarily like to meld them in other things that have nothing to do with witchcraft, okay? Or, you know, and if they do, I, I try to mark it in the title of the, of the video, so, you know, if people don't want to watch them, you know, then simply, you know, you'd pass. But I learned that you can learn from whole videos uh, things about how people use equipment and how people are using, you know, things. Now, uh, I usually don't go and buy big candles. Usually I just use the plain white candles. But, you know, there's a very cheap shop in, uh, in Rishon Metzion that sells very cheap candles. And I would like to share those with you. And also, I would like to, you know, show you the crystals that I've bought and what I'm using them for. You know, so this could be like a small lesson in candles and crystals and why I get what I get. Let me start with the candle first and, and get this out of the way. Well, candles in Israel, in Israel are expensive. They're expensive because, you know, all this uh, paraffin uh, melding and, you know, the weight of items that you have to bring from abroad is expensive. It's not that I could go to a botanica here and pay a buck for something where the candle, then, you know, I only have to put some oil or herbs in it and it's ready. I have to carve and make my own. So most of my candles, you know, the ones that I use are very simple because they are ready for me to carve them and do them. And in a way, energetically, it's better that you make your own candles or, you know, if you get like a candle, make it your own, like many people would expect. And let me tell you what, uh, what, I, what I've got prepared. Okay, first of all, I got this baby. It's a red block candle. I see that it, ha it has like tires because probably the wax was melted and like put there on, on and like, you know, on tires. It smells a little bit uh, cherry-y and I'm thinking of making this a Papa Legba candle. I, most of the time I have like either a red or black or even a white block candle burning for Papa Legba because he's the door opener and he's the master magician that basically, you know, rules every magic that I have so you know getting one and getting one for cheap is very good I paid like 10 shekels for this which would you know be like like I don't know like a dollar dollar 90 something like that so it's nice and I can carve it I got this uh, mix of tapers it has green blue uh, orange purple and reds and you know, when you need like for all sorts of colors, col uh, things, this is like 14 shekels, which is like, you know, a couple of bucks and extra. I've got the nose. Oh, and I'm using the different color candles either as an observance for an orisha or for their purposes, like green for healing or wealth or serenity. Here, let me open this for you. So you'll see the colors. Okay, for instance, the purple and the orange I use for yeah, and transformations and change. The red one I use for shango, for fire, you know, which is the regular thing. The blue ones for healing or serenity and the yellow ones for oshun, you know, for wealth, money, and friendship, positive energy and for love spells. For me, love spells are yellow, they are not so much red. Not so much green because you know um, this is my mother's Oshun color. I got tea lights, which are you know those are big baby tea lights, and we don't have so much of those in Israel this size. We don't have those uh, because I think that those are expensive and need to be important. We usually have them from IKEA, and I took a vanilla one. Vanilla is a very purifying scent. Okay. It's a very expensive purifying scent that I like having in my room in conjunction with other things. And, that, and I got the rose ones for uh, Orisha Yewa. 
but you know this could also be like you know good peaceful home candles you know and since the, those are flat I can easily carve peaceful home rooms into them and since it's like in the top it's a feminine candle okay it's like a uterus holding the wax so you know this is very good for female conjure also the vanilla ones I picked up a Yule candle and guys you know getting Christmas getting anything pagan in Israel is either very expensive or difficult and I paid like eight shekels for this so this is like considerably cheap and I would be into I would enjoy burning this during Yule I'm loving that I'm having like a special candle for that holiday it's a thing really I got a mix of candles here and those together all cost 10 shekels meaning each of them cost like two and a half shekels I have here like um, I have uh, one here that is like very bright pink which could go for Oba for the house and home I have light pink that is like for Yewa and Yewa I, 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 I often pray to her to preserve things, you know, preserve things from going bad, like if there is a good situation, like there is a good money flow, you know, I, I would take a rose candle and I would light for her. Also, you know, only using roses for love and familiar love, it's a bit, you know, disrespecting the rose, I think. I think it, they need more. I have an ocean breeze candle that is not so blue, but I like it that it's like, you know, pale, very vintage blue and and this one I would give to Yemaya or Olokun you know I would burn this for wealth and healing and you know walking with the subconscious I like ocean scented things and a lavender candle that could be used for purification or you know bring you know after a fight you know or something to bring some calm into a very hectic home I would use this okay I can the reason why I went there is you can get there yes I know this is terrible looking packaging but it's a very good uh, stable one okay this is those are dinner candles and those are made to be a uh, you know for all stuff like protection I can also use them for hexing, you know, for the traditional gist of it, because, you know, you can remove the negativity, banishing. And let, let me tell you people, banishing is going to be big. Lately, I'm receiving a lot of requests to banish people. I'm going to talk about this more when I, when I show you the crystals. Because, you know, once in the past, uh, you know, women that were taught not to be violent and were taught avoidance, would like you know rely heavily on banishing an unwanted love or banishing anything bad from their life but today men are not getting initiated into proper violence so you know men are requesting me to use some banishing too so the flying devil formula is is very useful here but i spike it with some asafutedia and some uh, chili pepper essential oil i make mine like hot like the hell okay and I got like four of those. And I hope you can see these guys. I really like the patterns on those, okay? Those are yellow. They are like mustard yellow. And they have the faint scent of patchouli. And and, and they have in the shop like um those in all colors, but only with the scent of patchouli. And I got those for Oshun because I also have always a running candle for her. You know, they are, they are burning in, in the background as we speak right now. And again, I carved all the runes of like wealth and love and those and I just let it burn. You know, it's very affluent for my, you know, my, uh, my wealth, my financial magic and my love magic that I do for myself and other people. And I got this, which I just love. Okay, there is like this gentle jinko pattern. Of leaves there which is teaching me ba basically that the pattern used to make this is Chinese originally and it smells like green apple I'm thinking this one could be a very good studying candle for on Mila 
And I, I already have like a client that I'm going to use it for, that she would succeed in her studies. So those are the candles that I've bought. I paid like 150 shekels. That should be like $35 for the, all of them. And you know, some of the groups said, hmm, expensive. For Israel, this is not expensive. Okay, now let's go crystals. And I really do love crystal magic. I make a lot of mojo bags. And I also make like fetishes. Uh, you know, I make nikisis and and uh, makutos, so you know, I use those a lot. And there are some that I use more than others. For instance, for protection, as I said in several several videos, I use jet. And I really like it, but I also use other gems as well. Okay. One of the gems that I said that I would talk about is this. This is onyx black. Sterenian Onyx. Okay, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. And as you notice, they are oversights. I bought five, but I used one already. Okay, and those are extremely good for many things. One of those are like, you know, you put inside them a specific person, you charge it with the energy of a specific person that you want to banish from your life or you want to banish from your house. It could be an abusive person, it could be like, you know, many, many things. You know, people you don't like and yet they are coming to your house. So after you do the banishing spell, and you can do the banishing spell using like four faves vinegar or whatnot. You can start going and using those and those are simply marvelous okay you need it to be big you need it to have like a, you know a rich but once you use it once you trap that person inside that beautiful little thing you put it in the living room you put it in the center of the house so that person will never come back and there is a, such a thing as a too much onyx. There is such a thing of exposing yourself for too much onyx, as much as this is an Eshu and Hecate and Nana Baruku stone. You don't want to have too much around or too much on you because they would kill your drive to do things. You, it would turn you passive. So, you know, I'm trying, and unless I'm having like extra, extra hyper time, I try not to have this like wear, wear worn on my body. Those are my onyxes. Okay, I found some beautiful pebbled emeralds. This is one. And this is two. Look at their amazing green color. Beautiful, isn't it? It's an Ashun stone and it's a wealth stone that is good to grid with, but it's also a divination stone and tell me the truth stone. So, you know, you can always find a reason to do that, to use that, you know. You can use it, you like, you can submerge one in a glass of water and give it to people that you want to tell you the truth, obviously. Let it soak there for a few hours and then remove it. And, you know, when you serve them the glass of water, it's like, serve it without this. Or you can use it, like, you know, in your office if you're a therapist and you want people to open up. It's a very good stone for that. It's also a good stone to keep you with your tarot cards or divination tools. I love it very much. I managed to also get this baby. This beautiful giant octiadra of fluorite, which is protective and purifying the body and removing like negative thought uh, patterns. This one is for me. I'm not giving this one up. I, I would use it for me. Like the rest of the crystals I would use for other people maybe, but this one, you know, this is one of my babies, and I saw it, and I held it, and I just couldn't put it down. Apparently, I need this. This is also good to maintain good teeth. This is also, you know, for all sorts of mind-altering spells, and just looking at you, you get entranced. Tell me what you think about this. Do you feel the energy from the screen? Can you relate to that stone? And it's pretty big, it's like a handful, and I don't have tiny hands, it's like I can't close my hands around it even. That's a good thing. And also, okay, I got those from a store called Stone Age. It's in Ramat Gan, and that store celebrated um, 
27 years of being in business and it's one of the major suppliers for gems and crystals in Israel. If you get to Israel and you need to get something, I, I you know, it's in, you're in the center of Israel, I really recommend you to check that place out. Okay, what next? I got those, those cost me almost nothing. Those would cost me more on the internet. Those are lava stones. And what do I use lava stone beads for? Well, lava stone helps you to maintain composure in the face of suffering, okay? It would help you to stay alive and stay alert uh, when you're suffering from a debilitating disease. If there is someone that is suffering from chronic pain, getting him or her a bracelet or a necklace with this stone is very advisable because it helps you maintain and compose yourself for the long journey of life and sadly we need you know i don't see enough people talking about this on youtube or on you know on books of what magic do you give someone that has chronic pain giving someone you know a healing session it's all very nice but but it just wouldn't cut it you know a lot of times that wouldn't cut it and you need to do something more permanent you know some people with uh, phantom limbs, people with PTSD, you know, especially in Israel because everybody here is going to the army. It's like a must. So I get those and I use those and those are very useful for me, you know, and I also have patients with chronic health problems. Now, can you guess what those are? It's not a very common stone. I don't see many witches use those okay this is copal yes like the resin like the resin incense but unlike the resin incense copal is uh, you know copal is young amber meaning it's fossilized okay it's fossilized and it's only 10,000 years old it's not a million years old that real amber is and this is used very much for purification. It's a good greeting stone for purification. It's a good stone, you know, if you can't afford amber for any reason, this is much cheaper for amber and it's much lighter for amber. You can pay a few shekels, you know, you, you, I, I don't think this one costs me more than a dollar and a half, for instance. It's very lightweight. It's almost like plasticine, okay? Because true amber, as you know, is, it's, is not glassy. True amber is like plasticine resiny cast. And one of the ways to check if it is, you find like a hidden spot and you warm a little needle and you put it there. And if you smell pine, you know it's amber. This is one of the ways to check. Or to put it in salt water and see if it sinks or floats. If it floats, it's amber. If it sinks, it's glass. Okay. And also, when I get those, those are so cheap that, you know, I, I understand that those are basically, you know, are made from, uh, are not made from composite things. Those are not pressed ambers. This is the real thing. And also, I would add this for mojo bags for people who need constant purification. People for that, for some reasons, like are, are ver getting very much, you know, into touching dirty things during the walk or during their lifetime. I don't know, you know, to keep something clean and pure, I would use those. Yes, and, and those are large enough to greet with, so, you know, I paid very little for them and I'm very happy for my purchase. I got one of those. This is ruby in quartz. So the quartz is enhancing the ruby. And we all know what ruby is used for. It's used for, you know, all the charisma and fire element, but it also protects your wealth. Okay, if you're afraid that stuff would get stolen or if you're afraid that you wouldn't be able to make money at some point, if you are a female, get yourself a little ruby something, okay? Get yourself a little ruby ring, get yourself a little ruby pendant. You don't have to get it rough. You can get ruby basically, you know, you can get go and buy a very expensive Burmese ruby and put it on your ring and, and like, you know, walk around with the ruby ring and it would protect you and protect your health and protect your wealth. So, you know, ruby is a stone that has very little flaws. Use it, use it to death. I got some black tourmalin. You see, it's like a little triangular thing. It has like the 
lines of the crystallization of the tourmaline. It was very inexpensive. And it has a base. It has a base, I think, that has a little bit of Gileda in it. And tourmaline is really being sold in Israel. It's like to, to go stones for protection. And I really don't understand why. I mean, you know, jet is so much better for you. But I like to keep those for those people who insist. And the fact that it has some Galena in it means that it's protecting a herbalist because Galena is a very herbal stone and it's very useful for herbalists to have around. They, it tells you what to put in a composition that you give people. But that has to be uh, uh, catered with care because Galena contains lead and arsenic and you should wash your hand after tempering with it. So I bought this piece of also very not, uh, very not expensive. I got a nebula stone. A nebula stone is a composite stone that its features are like, you know, black with little green dots. And it's a transformative stone. If you need to transform your body, if you need to transform your situation, if you want to make a vow to transform where you are and what you are doing, get the nebula. The nebula is your friend. Uh, but it's a very hard stone. It wouldn't take pity on you. If you want something softer, get an amethyst. But you know, if you are, if you need, if you are the sort of like jackass people that needs to be pushed, pushed in the right direction to do the right thing, get the nebula. It will never get you wrong. Also, you know, all the shamans that are into shape shifting, you know, shifting there and back safely. This one is a good one for you. It's not very much renowned. Now, the next things that I'm going to show you are the agates. And honestly, I had a little hangouts with, ag with agates. So I got like, you know, normal white striped natural agate. And I got some Botswana agate that looks like this. It's orangey and it's a uh, banded. Ever since I was a child, agate looked to me like a very new age stone. And also, it's my luck stone. It's like I'm a Gemini, so it's a stone that is very much recommended for my, for you know, the, you know, for my sign, my star signs. And I really raised an object, an objection for that stone. I really decided that I don't like it, and that's the end. I'm not going to use it in my craft. Up to the point in which I realized that I never really stopped to think and learn what agate does. And then I said, and I read about this, and then I said, hey, it's useful. If I can get a few cheap pieces, why, why don't I use them? It's like, they are very, very useful. So, you know, I got them, I read about them, and I decided that I need to have myself some agates. So agates are layered stones, so they help you deal with your layers of subconscious. It also helps you, you know, to differentiate between real and fake memories, which is very important nowadays. You know, you know that extra sensitive guy that, you know, thinks the whole world is against him. And, you know, he remembers you doing something really dreadful for him. And you didn't, and you're just like, what the fuck, dude? That didn't happen, okay? I think this would be a cool stone to like to insert to his pocket when he doesn't see or put in his bag. Or, you know, um, it's a very studying stone. It helps you study for tests because it, it's also, you know, the layers are also like brain cells. And um, specifically, what I like about the Botswana Agathe, which I already gave one, I bought four and I gave one, is... This is a non-bullshit stone. It's very fire element and it puts you to do stuff. Meaning, you know, if you're procrastinating, if you're a procrastinator, get up and admit it on my channel. Because you need to work on this. This is one of the major problems of the industrial world. We become very procrastinating. And, and, and I, like, you know, I got over my procrastination. I'm proud of myself. Okay, I managed to, I'm a healed procrastinator. I have no backlog to fill. I, I do stuff on time. I'm a good boy. So, you know, Botswana Agat is very much for, you know, people that instead of sinking into self-pitying, it's a get up and do something stone. 
okay? Be solution oriented. And for me, this is the most important thing. Also, it's very good for people who work with fire, smokers, uh, people who are, you know, in the fire department, etc., etc. Very useful. I like it. And last but not least, uh, it's always good to hold some Amazonite, and I got some pretty ones. You can see that it's like, you know, somewhat leopard with some mica and with some, uh, you know, with some mica and some uh, um, um, I think it's quartz another piece this is good to guard the heart not just the heart chakra but guard the heart against heart attacks so you know, if you are in a position where you had an where you had an heart attack, and you don't want to have another one, or you know, if you are in a position of, uh, you know, all sorts of things, you you can use it. It's very useful. It's a useful stone. So you know, it also he helps to heal the broken heart. Okay, if you need a one stone amulet. And you can't afford the ruby, which also helps with that. Get an, Amaz an Amazonite. It helps you heal. It helps you go through the motions. It's a good stone for you. Okay, so this is my haul. Please tell me what you think about this. Goodbye and a share.